I'm going to show you how to create a crossword in Adobe Captivate. There are lots of ways to achieve any given goal in software like Captivate or in Storyline. So this is just one possible solution to how you might build out a crossword in Captivate. And I would say in this particular example, this is more of a proof of concept that I built in a single morning. I was limited to my time in that single morning. So this is what I came up with. There's ways I could improve it, but this works okay right now as a proof of concept and as a way to show you how to build out a crossword. So first, let me show you what I built. I just made a simple things you find in Arizona crossword. I live in Arizona. It's kind of fun to, you know, make stuff local to your own particular context. Um, you can see when you hover over the crossword, uh, there's a rollover feature that kind of shows you what you can click on. I've got all the clues on the side. There's also an answer key as well. If you are really stuck, you could check the answer. Of course, customize to your own given learner here. Um, and what you do is if you click on a letter in one of the given clues, it'll take you to a corresponding slide for that clue where there is a text entry box and you can take a shot at answering the clue. If you don't get the clue correct or if you misspell it, nothing happens. This is an improvement I could make. Again, I built this in a single morning, so I didn't build in a, you got it wrong, uh, you know, state or slide or something. There's ways to do that. But if you go back using the back button, you can see nothing changes on the main crossword here. So if we want to give that another shot, it does retain my text. I can try a different guess, hit submit. And now it's programmed to jump back to the main crossword slide and it does plug in the letters here since I did get it correct. Now I'll show you what happens if I get them all correct. This one's a boob, submit, get it back here. Uh, if I come here, heal the monster, got that correct. Last but not least, the bark scorpion. Each of those slides works the same. And then there is a final check. If they're all correct, that little hooray appears and disappears pretty quickly. So that's what I built out in a nutshell. And I'll go through fairly quickly and show you how I built it out. In the video notes, you'll find the raw file as well as a quick how-to guide that shows you kind of just, you know, quick and dirty how to build this out yourself. Okay. So whenever you are building out a project like this or a silly game, it's really important that you actually write out what the content is, what you want to happen. Um, I've got some scratch paper off to the side here where I wrote down some logic. Before you build out advanced actions, you need to kind of think about what you want to build out for those advanced actions so you don't waste any time building things you don't need later on or things you have to do a lot of testing and then won't work. Okay, so you can see in advance, I built out my four clues, uh, what each answer was, as well as a clue itself. I don't build out crosswords on a regular basis, so I just did a quick search for, you know, crossword creator, took me to crossword labs, I put in my information here, and it created it for me, and there's also a um, answer key if you um, print that out. So you can see in my Captivate project, I did just do a quick copy and paste and put that answer key off to the side on my main canvas here, so I could build this out um, and use that as a reference. All right, so move some of this stuff off screen here. All right, so this is already built out, obviously. Uh, but what's really important about any game or project where you're going to have a lot of the same kind of interactives, like say each of these squares is going to be a button that changes state, build out one of them in advance, only one. Don't build out all of them and then have to go back and change all the settings for every single one later on. It gets really tedious really quickly. You can save for yourself a lot of time and headache by building out one in advance and just doing a copy paste. So for this instance, on a blank slide, I just put in a whole bunch, or I just put in one square. If you hold down the shift key as you insert the square, it makes a perfectly square square. <laughs> and what I did from there is I adjusted the style how I liked it. I clicked retain state on slide revisit as well as use as button. And then I went into the state view and you can see because I, I added it as a button, um, it puts in the default rollover and down states. And I added one more state, a custom state that I named completed. And that's the state where I put in the letter. So say it's an, an S or whatever it is. And I um, also, you know, customize that to how I want it to look. Because every single square is going to be a duplicate of the square. So if you build all this stuff out in advance for the one square, all you have to do is do a, um, you know, copy paste. Or you can do a control or command D on your keyboard. And then you can make more squares. 
more squares, and you just line them up according to whatever your answer key looks like. And you will have to go back into the state view. This gets a little bit tedious here. And you go into the completed state for every single one, and you have to change that letter to whatever the corresponding letter is in your clue. So for Sawaro, I had to go through and change the completed state letter to every single letter in that clue. Now, the next thing that's really important in Captivate, whenever you are building out something remotely complicated where you're going to be using advanced actions, is you do need, let me just go ahead and, and delete these here. You do need to name all of your objects. Anything that's gonna be used as part of an advanced action, anything that's gonna change state or be checked against a variable, you need to name it. So this is kind of tedious. So once you do the letter change in the completed state for every single box on screen, as you can see, this is why I only did four clues here. I probably should have done less for purposes of a demo. Um, I went down into the timeline here. I selected every single box and changed the object name. So you can just click on the object name or the object, change the name up here. I use the full clue answer as the first part of the name and then H. So that helps when I go into the advanced actions, I can make sure I got all of the clues, all the letters for the clue Haboob because they're all in order basically. So that's really important that you name all of these things and it also makes it really nice and tidy. So you even name the, the images. It will help you a lot when you go and um, do those advanced actions. So this is the first thing to do. I built out, I built out the entire crossword. Then I created four more slides, not counting the answer key slide. I did a slide for each of the clues. So the idea is to click anywhere in the clue and I'll take them to the corresponding clue interactive slide where they can actually take a guess. Now I toyed with the idea of doing a quiz question that got really complicated really fast. So I realized I could just do a blank slide and put in a text entry box. If you go to text here and Captivate, you can put in that text entry box. And Captivate is actually really sophisticated for how you can program out the text entry boxes. So we create that box here, go over to properties, and there's some default things that are already checked, but I checked validate user input, and that made this little box appear here, so you can put in the correct entry. So if there's, you know, more than correct an one correct answer, there shouldn't be because it's a cross or there should be only one correct answer. So I just put in the one correct answer and then I went into more options. I programmed the maximum length to be seven letters. I make a note up here under the clue uh, that it's only seven letters. So it limits entries to seven letters. I left everything else at, at the default. And then I went to um, actions. So if it's correctly validated, when they hit submit, it's going to jump back to the slide crossword. Okay, so only if they're successful, it's gonna jump back to the slide crossword. Otherwise, nothing is gonna happen and they can just click back on their own. Again, I built this in a single morning. I should go back and build in some sort of fail state or fail slide, but you will see if you click on this text entry box again, there are options down here for building in failure slides, success slides, whatever. So you could build that in. I just you know ran out of time, so I didn't have time to do that. All right. So the idea is you build out each of these text entry box or these text entry slides similarly. Put the clue, how many letters. Um, build out one again, just kind of like we built out one box here and then duplicated. Build out one slide to completion and then duplicate it. That's what I did. And then you can just swap out the clues and then you can change the validation for each box. So save yourself some time. Build out one slide duplicate it for your other clues, and then each one will look and function basically exactly the same. I got this back button as well that takes them back to the crossword slide. All right, so now that everything is built out, now and only now is it time to start building out your advanced actions. So from here, again, add a bit of trial and error to build out the advanced actions. And one of the challenges with Captivate is that when you run a slide, on enter, you can only execute a single advanced action. So how I have this running is that every time the slide loads, it checks to see if all of the text entries were correct. And if they're correct, it changes these to the completed state. So you can see that you got the answers correct. But you can only run one advanced action. So I had to build it all out 
as part of one advanced action. Let me show you what I did. Again, this is trial and error. I did it wrong first, and then I had to redo it. Um, so every time this main slide loads, so if they go to the you know the text entry box and they come back, it's going to rerun this script to see if everything is correct or not. Um, I ran, uh, I created a series of conditional actions, one for each of the clues. I'll show you about that one last. And if their text entry box is equal to the correct answer, then all the states are going to be changed on the clue. So I um, can't remember if I mentioned this. On the text entry box, you can change the name of the variable. There, when you create one of these, it just gives it a generic like text entry 121 or whatever. So change the variable name for each text entry box to something unique. I change it to guess underscore the clue name for every single one. So it's really clear when I go back to do the advanced action. So let me show you this again. So you can see it checks each of those variables. So if they got it correct, if it was validated correctly, the variable is going to be equal to the correct answer. And then it's going to change the state of each of those letters in the clue to the state completed. Again, this is why it was so important to name those objects up front and to have all those states set up up front. So you can be really straightforward in building out this action. Everything's named, everything's tidy. Um, if a letter is shared by two words, I labeled that accordingly and I put in order as well. So B-A-R-K for, for scorpion, the bark scorpion. Um, you can use these letters or these arrows to move things around if they're incorrect. To save yourself some time as you build out one of these, you can actually copy, click an empty line and paste. And that'll save you a little bit of time to build out the additional clues for each of these. And then, I did rename, if you double click on these, you can rename these tabs. So you can't combine advanced actions in Captivate, at least not easily. What I had to do was make one advanced action and then use the multiple tabs to build out an action for each of these. So each of these is identically set up. It checks the variable to see if it's correct, which is what the, what the text entry was. If it's correct, then it's gonna change the word to the completed state and the user can see that they got it correct. Finally, I built out one more. This last advanced action checks each of the clues to see if they're correct. If all four are correct, it'll show you hooray, which is that little hooray you saw on screen up front here. Where did I put it? No, I guess I took it off. Oh, there it is. Um, that's this here. So it's just a final, final, yay, you got it. If all the clues are correct, you can see I set the initial state to hidden, which is not visible in output. And then the advanced action, I set it to show. Remember, I, I named this as well down here, so I knew exactly which image to select as show. And then I set this to an animation so that... Um, there's a little animation that comes in and then it also disappears before the buttons pause the slides. So the buttons pause at one and a half seconds here, which is the default for Captivate. It'll hide before then so they can see the results of their hard work. Um, one more thing that I did was I did build in a force complete button as well. When you're building out complicated things like this, it can be really helpful if you build in some sort of test features. So I did build out one more advanced action where I automatically have one button that changes all the variables to be correct. So it changes each variable to the correct answer. And then I exit out of the slide and come back so that when I re-enter this slide, it runs that script one more time and it'll automatically change all the answers to be correct. And then it shows the hooray state. I was trying to test this hooray state and I got kind of annoyed because you know you don't wanna to have to like get every single one correct every single time and then go back in just to see if this was working correctly. So let me show you um, about that. So if all the answers are still hidden, I can click force complete. I have to exit out and then go back and they can see all of the variables were checked as correct. They all change the correct answers and then it showed me a little hooray state. So you can build in little back doors for yourself, little um, test features. And if you move them off the screen, the user can't see them. So same thing with this, it's off the canvas. This button's off the canvas. It's here for you as a developer when you go to um, test or build this project and have some features for yourself as a developer. But when you go to publish, just move those off the screen. You don't have to delete them, just move them off the screen and then the user won't see them. All right, so I think that is pretty much everything I have to share with you. Oh, and of course, I don't know if I mentioned this, um, I click on each box and make sure it jumps to its according, its um, relevant slide. Uh, so the user can jump to those text entry slides and come back. Uh, I did mention that the boxes that are shared by two words, those don't do anything. I just left them at no action so that there's no confusion about which word they're going to go to. All right. So again, 
Check in the video notes to get a copy of this raw file as well as a quick how-to guide. If you have any questions or if you have success in building your own crossword, I would love to hear about it. Please pop those into the comments. All right, that's it for me. Happy developing.